it's pod quester time now it is pod quester time time Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us to uh, recap the episode Shark Bait. So excited to have Charlie Jones here with us. Jones of Keeping Up with the Joneses, of course. I'm keeping up with the Joneses. How are you yeah. doing, Charlie? A wonder, wonder. Um, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> um, you know, doing well. Excited, excited chat about um, Shark Bite. Um, Is it shark bite, not shark bait? No, I think you're right and I'm wrong. Um, no, it's shark bite. It's shark bite. Oh, okay. There we go. All there right. There we go. Shark bite. <laughs> excited to chat about that. It's going to be great. I'm excited. So we start out the episode and Muna is in luxury row. What were you hoping to see here? Were you excited that she... Um, were you hoping she was going to get a battle match, or the battle pass, or were you thinking that was too much power for one person? Yeah, so, I mean, I love this whole little opening sequence, too, because, you know, we, we open on the scene. We, we know what happened already, but still we get to kind of see the reaction again of, you know, Muna winning, staying in the game, and also... Well, maybe one of my favorite little bits from the episode is just Brendan off screen being like, proud of you, but it doesn't even cut to him. Proud of you, Muna. I don't know if anyone else heard that. And um, <laughs> then, you know, she winds up in Luxury Row. We all know she has the LOS. If Muna can pick up the Battle Pass, which we just saw be pretty insanely powerful. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of power for one person, like you said. I mean... It really would have been crazy to see if she got it. I was personally rooting for that outcome just because it would have been a really full arc, you know. But, um, you know, you never pick middle. You know, from a strategist like me, you never pick middle. Always left or right. What do you pick? Really? I'm snapping off right in that situation. I think I would pick right too, just because this is this is gonna kind of age me, but like you know, scantrons and shit. Like they always told you, like C was the most common yes. answer and a multiple choice, and so that's kind of my go-to when I'm looking like a one-two-three number situation too. I'm still gonna pick what I would correlate as C. Absolutely, and I just I don't want to like. I feel like if I pick the middle and I don't get it, I'm like, oh man, like. Mm. obviously it wasn't in the middle like that's the middle one but if i pick one of the other ones it's like oh it could have been in left or it could have been in right yeah you know that really feels like a 50 50 to me yeah i think that yeah i would probably pick right too but um no matter what i pick i'm gonna kick myself if i don't get it exactly um, well, and if, i would have just picked the battle pass but uh no, that's what i <laughs> yeah. you would have just done it you would have exactly. into your intuition would have led you there um well you know that's, we can't all be charlie jones yeah no that's absolutely true uh it's tough to be me but um yeah i mean i was hoping she got it but also you know that means i wonder if the if the battle pass gets picked the next time is that the last advantage right because even if it gets used what are you gonna have a battle pass at the final five that like is basically just besides the whole thing? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like it could be the last one the next time it get it, it gets picked. Like you know, spoilers. But if uh, the person coming back gets it again, if um, you know, that Jake would be amazing if again. Jake gets it again, right? But Muna knows. You know what I mean? Like and and and, and can play around it. I think has anyone who's left not been to Luxury Row? Billy. Not even everyone no, yeah, everyone but Billy. Yeah, Billy's the um, only one who hasn't been in a battle match yet, which is hilarious because you know they came up a little bit last game where they were like, but we're not gonna talk about that. Um, but this yeah. round it did not come up once. Not like Marcelo has to go in. Like he's the only one, is the way they kept saying it. Like they completely forgot that him and Billy. So I wonder if it will come up next round that Billy has also not been in. Yeah, it's a good point too, especially also like um, Josh and Natalie haven't gone in in so long that, you know, uh, it's like Josh went in so long ago. I mean, 
I don't know. It's like, I feel like it's different with Spencer and Muna and Jacob just because now they will have all been in multiple battle matches. Like, I almost think, like, I know Billy hasn't been in one, but, and we can get to this, but, you know, I, I think Billy's probably the most, best set up person. So I'm thinking, like, if there's a battle match argument, it might actually go against Natalie or Josh, you know, if there's some reconciliation rather than actually Billy because Billy is kind of, sitting really nice it seems like um, yeah nobody yeah. wants to uh, betray billy um it's very interesting but what we'll, we'll, yeah. yeah let's get into that so um and speaking of billy she was riled the hell up she was big mad uh that muna was we saw her crying we saw her jumping rope we saw her pacing um and her outfit felt very thoughtful like it felt like she chose her outfit carefully for this game yeah and i think another one of my favorite little edits from the episode was that little jump rope montage uh it's like the rocky montage but for billy just like i'm getting ready and i'm coming in like even, <laughs> even before this uh you know pretty much the episode has started we're just seeing like billy's like I'm I'm taking off um I'm taking off the mask. It's it's time. But you know, I kind of like it it was a funny edit to me because I've like Billy has kind of been one of the most fun players every round. So it was interesting to see Billy be like, "Oh, I'm really turning a corner here because it's just like every episode Billy is doing something awesome." Mm -hmm. And also there's like really so is it like a stated rule that the person who comes back from the battle match, right? Like Muna coming back from the battle match gets to talk, like gets to give that speech. And then it's just like a free for all. Like what is that time period for? Is I it like don't, I don't know if it's like a custom or if it's rules or what, but she made her decision about who was going to get to talk for <laughs> sure. I mean, I loved it. That's exactly what I would have done. Marcel was like, no, I, I want to say my piece. Or it was Marcella, right? Yeah, like mm -hmm. Marcella was like, I want to say my piece. And she was like, no, like, it's not allowed. Like, <laughs> I was like, I I'm absolutely doing that, whether it's true or not. But I was convinced. I was like, oh. I swear to God. I'm so glad that you and I are never playing games together. Because that would I totally, I would be like, Charlie, you don't make the rules. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. I mean, I I no, but if you're Muna, too, it's like, why, like, you know, stifle this at all costs. I mean, you have the the, the floor right now. You know, why give it up? Yeah, um, I agree. I definitely agree. I think both of them should have done what exactly what they did. Like, try to talk, but don't let them talk. <laughs> yeah, and I think the game moves of Jacob, you know, last episode have been uh, pretty appropriately critiqued from a strategic sense. But pretty much, like, now it's just Jacob and Marcelo being set up for whatever the, you know challenge round is going to be the strat the strategic round and you know it's i think we're already getting the sense of the dynamics being either you know like a house v jacob and marcello or close to that even at this opening scene before we've even gotten into the round yeah which is interesting because yeah, Jacob's there and he's like, "Talk your shit, Marcelo. Talk it. Say it. say what you need to say." He's really telling Marcelo that he should be getting into these fights, and um, you know, I think he wants to appear to be a good ally to Marcelo, but I also think he wants to put Marcelo on the target list um, because he cares. He's like anybody but me, <laughs> just Absolutely. anybody but me. So this happens. Then we see the little. Billy training montage. Maybe that was before. It was in one of these breaks. And then they introduced the round, which was an interesting, you know, I, I did not get it the first time until it kind of started. I was like a little confused, yeah. but um I so, was hoping for seven deadly sons, I'll admit it. I was I was hoping for like I thought it was gonna be I kind of liked how it was paced that there were kind of like it felt like there was kind of multiple rounds to the strategy round. She had mm -hmm. this first section. And um, so we're pitching to the jury, um, you know, two people who are going to get put up. But the person who, you know, serve, uh, you know, and those two people are going to, one of them is going to get voted in the battle match, but the other one can't get picked, right? So the, the idea here is, right, the other one can't get picked. I had that right? right. 
So wait, the other one can get picked. They can't. They can get picked. Okay, yeah. So they did get picked. <laughs> they did get picked. Yeah, that's that's why I was correcting myself. The but, person who can't get picked is the person who nominated them. Who nominated them? Okay, yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> I loved the opening uh, Marcelo Yakety Sax speech where we got a little bit of everyone. Being like, my, um, they, they have them walk into the room like it's Shark Tank, and it kind of is Shark Tank. Shark bite. And they have them being in their head, like it's like, yeah, I'm gonna pitch them on my idea because yeah, da, 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 and just, oh man, like Marcelo was really like he was like, I don't know, I, uh, it was a bad start to the speeches, Susie. What did you th- what did you think of Marcel <laughs> Marcel's pitch? It was it was interesting because he's so confident in the confessionals, right? And the confessionals, he's like. He's got this bravado. He's got looking you straight in the eye, in the, well, in the camera. Um, and he speaks very clearly. There he was frantic, right? He was just frenetic and stumbling over things and saying the same, like, two things over and over. I built relationships. Uh, and I absolutely think you have to stump for yourself in this section. This is a great, great tool. Um, whether or not you get your nominees this is an amazing moment that you have with the jury, but I don't think that it was well thought. I think people don't realize how long three minutes is. So they underestimate how much they have to say. And so that meant he kept just saying the same things over and over again. And then as it rang, he was like, and Josh and Jacob on my choices, no explanation, right? (laughs) That was really hard to kind of watch. I have no clue why he would want to put up Josh and Jacob. Literally zero clue what what the strategy there was. Yeah, so I loved that players kind of saw the time as like, oh, I just get a like time to talk to the jury. Like the round's important, but maybe not as important as them getting three minutes of what I have to say about other stuff. Particularly, um, some players that I think were at the beginning of the the pregame rankings and may have you know been there for a while of, of people thinking who's going to this game. You know, I think Josh Spencer um, and Natalie all kind of saw that line of, look, I, I might not be able to win against some of these people right now. I don't know if some of these people are too pleased with me and, or, you know, respect me. I got to take this time and, and really make it count. Um, and I think one thing that happened with Marcelo's speech was he sort of had that same inclining of like, I'm playing really smart, but I, people have been floating. I've been kind of pegged. Like this is an important moment for me. Um, I, I don't, you know, he really kind of stumbled in his delivery. And also, you know, I think Natalie and Josh were doing similar things, but also kind of weaved it into their people and sort of were able to kind of present a more clear narrative. Whereas Marcelo kind of just seemed to get stuck in his own head and ramble. Um, yeah. yeah. Also, and he, so what do you think? Why do you think he was, he was throwing out Josh and Jacob? Why do you, what would be that benefit for him? So I think, I think what we were going to see by the end of this episode and pretty much was this episode was uh, Jacob and Marcelo saying, look, um, the two of us are not going to last. One of us might be able to last. The two of us together are, are not going to last. If we miraculously make it through one, you know, elimination, it'll just be the next one when the house bands together. So I think they both kind of correctly identified, look, it, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this together. And we'll see that later in the battle match pick. Um, because, you know, I mean, I don't know to what extent this is public information, but they're incredibly close real life friends, maybe the closest in the cast. Um, I'm at least going into the game. I don't really, you know, know what's up with people's relationships afterward, but, you know, going into the game, like they're very like really close friends and like that was shown in the show. And um, so I think, you know, it's, and, and people definitely knew that as well. So I think there was a little bit of a, standoff that just said look if if 
uh, each of our fates is going to be longer if the other one goes. And I think that's what Marcelo was getting at. Jacob got there a little bit later, but he was actually successful. Um, what'd you I think don't about? Know. No, I just you... felt like I felt like maybe he was thinking that they would put up Jacob no matter what, but that he could get the votes on Josh if Jacob was up too, because mm-hmm. Marcelo seems to really hate Josh. Yeah, that's another part of the thing that was uh, this episode, and we'll get to that, which was... Yeah, so I think that he wasn't gunning for Jacob in that. I think he was gunning for Josh. That In that part of the episode, I was kind of like walking around with my laptop a little bit. I was like, wait, what did you... <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. We'll anyway, get there. We'll get there. But, uh, but let's um, move on to the to other people's speeches. Yeah, so who did Moon you think- out. Muna lays out an amazing case, I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think really honestly, the people who picked the nominees that wound up going up gave the best speeches. I, I don't want to be results oriented, but that's what it felt like to me. So good job, Jerry. Do we actually know who's technically picked? who did they keep safe? Billy. Oh yeah, Billy. So you know, four people they gave- went with they went with Muna's plan. Right. Muna laid out that plan. If you pick Billy, I have an LOS. We'll be good to go. Okay. Yeah. If Billy nominates these people, Billy nominated those people. They picked them. And so and Billy Muna. and Muna could not go into the bat- battle match. And, you know, it's, it's, there is a sense of that. And I've been in, you know, games where this is the case too, where, you know, the, the jury, you know, and, you know, Jay West is there. Jay West was the one who gave Muna that LOS, you know, they want to see the one of their own and who was, you know, knocked out, like go far. And Muna was probably the person who presented the most coherent plan of everyone. Like you said, Um, I think Josh did a really good job also. Um, But, you know, like Muna's plan was to the right crowd, pretty foolproof as we saw, and actually kind of made sense to her goals. Um, what about what do you think of the uh, the Spencer to jury speech? Considering you know, you know, I thought for uh, it's, um, I think I was watching with Alex Brizard and he was like, "This is a long way from the Captain America speeches." And I definitely think Spencer, as a player, has grown one hundred percent the most. Right? Like he's, I mean, in the past two rounds, ever since Moon has kind of taken his hand and. <laughs> And they're like, boy, we ain't doing it this way. Um, he's really turned it around. So I thought his speech was better. I don't think he has any, I don't know if he has no idea or if he's choosing to ignore the, the fact that most of the jury hates him. But um, <laughs> I don't, I'm mean, like, what are you supposed to do? I don't know. So I think he yeah. could have talked a little bit more about his own game, but guess- they weren't going to give it to him. Yeah. And, you know, I think I don't really know what you're supposed to do in his situation there. Uh, but even by this point in the episode, my head was sort of like, I don't know if we're going to see Spencer go home until it's that final four drag. You know, I, I think Spencer being in the final two, depending on who else is in the uh, final. Yeah, I don't I, like it, seems like no one's incentive is close to wanting him out. Everyone thinks he'll beat him. Everyone thinks he could be a final final four drag. He's voting honestly and pretty much telling people what he's going to do at this point. And, I mean, you can't really write things as good as the Muna, Spencer, Billy storyline of... Uh, and Josh, this the four of them. And Josh, the f- yeah, of course. But, you know, I mean, just in terms of specifically, you know, their dynamics, unlike Josh, where I think... Yeah. Kind of I mean, time, I think but- that, yeah, Spencer, like isn't yelling at people anymore and it's hard to say hey that's a great job good job not yelling at people but dear god he needs to stop yelling at people and uh so his ability to do that has miraculously changed his game a lot i mean um these are people who wanted to work with him from the beginning like even shireen when he like at some point he talks about how you have to be strategic with your battle match choices and how he got out people who didn't want to, I was like, she wanted to work with you, bro. Um, we just, if you saw her exit interview, she was down to work with him. So yeah. all his allies yeah. are gone. He has to make new allies. And finally 
he's in a place where he has to listen, I guess. He's been forced into a better game. Um, and I think the only person, though, he could still beat just left. Uh, so that, I mean, I, I think that, you know, yeah. he did what he did. Um, and I think the speech was fine. I think, that, yeah, it's a mass improvement over previous games. Uh, it's certainly a massive I- improvement. I mean, you know, I I think it's, you know, winter equity is is traveling, you know, pretty close to hell. But, um, you know, besides that, I mean, you know, there is always a most improved award in the NBA um, and in many sports. And going to be tough to give that to anyone besides him or Natalie at this point, I think. Um, and good on both of them who I think, you know, really started off rough for very, very different reasons. Um, but, you know, are now seeming to do a much, much, much better job. Um, and I yes. think maybe the battle match format, you know, assuming you can win your first battle match, like gives you a lot more opportunity than you would in another comparable social strategy game to, you know, correct your mistakes and be like, Oh, I messed up and I easily could have left the game, but I'm actually still here and I'm still playing. Whereas in those other games, maybe at the first time you realize you made a mistake, you're already gone. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, third Anything time's else? the charm for waking him up, I guess. Um. Right. <laughs> so, any any of the other things uh, from I would, to say that to you? Yeah, Natalie, I thought had a great presentation, yeah. um, and she lays out her final four. She's clearly thinking. I love it. You know, a lot of people are have been thinking about the final two. This is the first episode where we get to see them talking final four, which is coming up so soon and is so important to get to final two. You can dream about your final two all day, but if you don't know what your final four is, you're going to get screwed. Um, So I love that she laid it out. My issue was she only spent one minute of her three minutes laying it out. And then she just stood there. And if you've got three minutes in front of the jury, you got to use every second of it. Yeah, I I could not agree more. I, you know, I also feel like one thing that was, you know, interesting about it too is it was so different from the rest of the challenges, uh, like at a beginning, like give this speech, you know, and you could see, you know, not only did, you know, Muna have a little bit of the home court advantage as a bunch of her initial allies and people, also people who were eliminated, but also, you know, uh, this is like what she does for a living. <laughs> so you kind of saw the like, you know, a bunch of like people who don't do that for a living going against someone who did it for a living. And that was tough to, you know, like someone, you know, I want to say, you know, other people did well, but, you know, she was really on a, on a different playing field just in terms, in terms of the presentation aspect. You got to use all your time. It's the first thing they teach you in, in debate. <laughs> Yeah, uh, use every second. The, I mean, I think Natalie laid out a great presentation. I just wish she had like gone through and talked to each of them individually. I mean, if you have two minutes, let's talk about my relationship with Shireen. Let's talk about my relationship with Rachel. Let me talk about my relationship with JOS. Talk about anything. I think in my first game that I won, I talked about my hair because I had like some time left. I was like, if I can yeah. keep going, let me talk about how I did my hair up just for this game and stuff. Well, like, really- just. If they'll let you talk, keep talking. And Billy did that exact thing. You know, I think Billy also, you know, we're never going to know exactly what, you know, was it they were, you know, what percent was it Muna's pitch to not, you know, or Billy's pitch. But, you know, Billy did that exact thing, right? Billy said, and we saw Brent's decision making about this. You know, Brent was like, well, I really love Natalie's, but, you know, Billy like almost made me cry. Where Billy was, you know, took a really different apo- approach from everyone else and, you know, was much more individualistic in like storytelling. Um, you know, the, you know, the anecdote with Brent, I think went a long way um, to, you know, and we were able to see that on Brent's end in terms of the decision making. Billy actually spoke to my heart and almost made me cry. I think that, yeah, I think the only other one is, and we already talked about this a little bit, was Josh's was really, I think if he, he didn't know about Muna's LOS, so that screwed up the whole thing. But if Muna didn't have an LOS, um, this would have been a kind of effective way of speaking, of, of doing it. Um, I I think in the end, it was a little too shady and effy, but he spoke passionately about it. And I didn't think he was wrong. Here's the thing. Josh is throwing shit at a wall and seeing what sticks. 
in a lot of this game. He's got that LOS and he is riding it high, right? Like he's like, yeah. I don't care if you don't give me safety. I've got an LOS. I don't care. I can talk back to everyone. I've got an LOS. Like he is just being the most straight shooter. And um, I, I, you know, I don't know if that's because he has the LOS, but he certainly doesn't seem to care about safety. <laughs> Could we see like some sort of like advantage get in? Like if next round, like, just someone went home and the LOSs weren't played and then it's final five. There's a battle pass and two LOSs. Uh, going into the final five. Um, I think that, I think they expire at six. They either expire oh, at six or six. five. Okay. I can't remember well, we'll which see. one. We'll see. We'll see for sure. We will find out. Um, but I that would be a lot on the table. <laughs> yeah. so um, they, go, they go with the plan. Billy, uh, with, they go with Billy. They go with Billy. Moon's plan. Go with Billy. And now we're in the. Um, and I don't want to give all the credit to Muna. I think that Billy no. did, an, like you said, Billy did an amazing job too. So it was Muna's plan, but we don't know if they right. we didn't get to see a lot of their yeah. whole thing. But uh, I so I don't know if. They, we big, know they wanted Jacob and Marcelo in, but we don't know if they wanted Billy's plan or Muna's plan, but they went with Billy. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, they, they all get picked and over under five seconds until uh, Jacob and Marcelo decide we're no longer friends. <laughs> Now Marcelo, own up Marcelo, move, Marcelo, own up to your move. Why? Get out, man. Were, Get out. What, what Yo, you own up. That was, uh, that was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. I, you they know, spend that, so, so much right. more time talking to each other than they did to their voters. It yeah, was, and, you're somebody who campaigned. You campaigned professionally. Do you think it's better to talk to your fellow campaigners or to the people voting? Yeah, I mean, it's also like, you know, we all come from the the mini community and you know it's like these are two really well regarded game players you know jacob's considered you know uh in the conversation for the for the best literally number one person to have played in the minis and marcel is probably you know up there in terms of people who, who didn't take one down and so i was like oh if there's anyone who's not going to fall into a thing like spending all their time talking to the one person who can't vote it's these two but alas and I think, you know, maybe that had something to do with, with their, their personal relationship. But I think they were also a little flustered to be in, in the position they were in. Um, you know, particularly Marcelo, who in a matter of one ceremony, I think had been at his game really flipped around to be, he thought he was sitting pretty and now he's ostensibly on the bottom. Yeah, I think that, Marcelo kind of panics, right? Um, and oof, it, it would be interesting to count the amount of contradictions that these two men have in their conversations because they are just throwing everything at each other. And at a certain point, it start, stops making sense, right? Like Marcelo's like, the person who's yelling is clearly the liar. And I'm like, you're yelling, bro. You're the first one who started yelling. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're like, in, in, and then Jacob's like, you know, who would do this to a friend? I'm like, you just did it to Muna, bro. Like, but yeah. like both of them are just like contradicting themselves over and over. They are so angry. They stop making sense. They yeah, literally and, stop making sense. And that first room they go into, right when they start having this argument, Spencer goes in there. It's like, do you want me to go? Marcel's like, no, no, you can stay. And it's like, okay, great. You just patronize to one of five voters you know it right. was just like it was ridiculous i mean i'm sure that you know maybe there is a little more campaigning we didn't see but certainly the the idea we got was they spent most of their time in there and that's they moved to the kitchen together while marcel yeah, gets water i'm like y'all are just going around the house screaming at each other is anybody going to try to make a plan with anyone so Jacob does spend some time with Josh. We see him try to convince him. And Josh is just like, oh, I'm going to vote for you. You're too big of a threat. Um, he's not able to persuade him. He doesn't even really try with Billy or Muna. He, like, he has yeah. a little bit of a conversation with them, but not really. Um, I think. And Mar Mar 
Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, mean to interrupt. I was just going to say, I think Jacob was trying to do a little, uh, you know, plant the seed, let it grow there. And it just didn't, didn't grow where he was trying to seem really cool with Josh voting for him. And he was like, but here's, here's a little counter argument. And here's a little counter argument, but wasn't trying to be like, please, please vote for me. Please, 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 please. Um, and, you know, it was funny because, you know, the vote was ultimately four to three when I kind of thought the house would get together and it'd be, you know, six to one. Um, but it wasn't, you know? And so you have to think uh, maybe if Jacob presses a little harder on some of the votes, maybe he gets there and it's Marcelo. And then I don't know if Marcelo is picking him, but who knows, you know, they really were at, at their wits end with each other. And I think both saw the outline So, you know, do you, do you think, you know, it's hard not to be results oriented, right? Cause not only did he get voted up, but then he won the battle match. So I guess who cares, but do you think maybe a more forceful approach would have swung one of these people? Not, I don't think it would have swung Josh. A, Josh has the LOS. Um, and I don't think Josh responds well to threads. Um, so I, I honestly don't think he was going to get Josh's vote. I think that he could have tried to make up with Billy. That's the one person I think he could have tried to make up with. It was really interesting because they leave the battle match the night before. And I'm saying this without really knowing the hours, but just the last episode, they leave the battle match and Jacob is still lying, right? He's still saying yeah. that he has to, but they go into this battle match and something's happened where they all agreed that he was lying and that it wasn't him. Like Jacob's not even trying to lie anymore. And I'm not sure what happened there, but um, they already, Billy and Muna were not convinced. I think, you know, uh, and then, of course, Marcella lays it all out and is like, yeah, it was Jacob and Natalie. This was a Jacob and Natalie situation. And they came for you. Um, Jacob was had already gotten Spencer and Natalie, so he needed Billy or Muna. And I think Billy was the most susceptible because, like, at the battle match ceremony the night before, she was only almost believing the fact that he felt like he had to vote Muna. So if he could play some sort of he wasn't going to be able to convince Muna and he wasn't going to be able to convince Josh. He needed Billy. Um, but I don't think he, he, he didn't realize Josh had an LOS. He didn't realize a lot of things that really affected how he played that. And of course he was locked in a room with Marcelo most of the game. Yeah. I think, you know, I have a rule when it comes to social strategy games and it's that in most things in life, I'm like three or more strikes and you're out. Like I'm a pretty, generally forgiving person in social strategy games. I think you can have a very good two strike policy and I think good, whether they think about it in this way, I think subconsciously kind of good people who are good at these games naturally have that instinct where it's like, okay, like there may be an explanation for one kind of counteractive move that might not have meant to be like a killing blow. But the second time, there's almost no way that two times yeah. it was good. And I think that's where Jacob and Muna were at, where it was like, Muna's like, look, I'm not going to let this guy play me for a fool. Uh, like, he, you know, there's a chance, you know, this, you know, it went exactly like he said. And, you know, it's my best move, but it's so unlikely that I have to, you know, take this, the smart approach and go with what everyone is telling me. And, you know, she's she has uh, been eliminated from the game uh, and has an LOS. She doesn't want to mess it up. I, you know, I, I don't think he has a play there. So I, I agree with you. I think Jacob's best shot was Billy. Um, I would have even considered maybe just telling Billy, like, a lie about Marcelo or something. Like, just he's already lying, and he's already throwing everything at the wall. I would have considered going to Billy and just, like, saying, like, Oh, in date night, like Marcel said, you were the number one worst or something. You know, I don't know. But, you know, it's just tough because the vote was so close that I wonder, you know. But I don't know. It, that's being results-oriented. I, I, he took an approach and it didn't happen over at that time. But, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say. I don't know. I don't think that much happened in this round that turned out to be incredibly consequential besides what everyone was doing besides them, which was – making what I think will be the final four. I think it will be the final yeah, four. I, I agree. I think so too. I will say 
another thing I think that happened that we have to talk about is if Natalie is in the final two and Muna is not, she probably has Muna's vote. Muna was really impressed by Natalie coming for her. We have gotten uh, maybe a confessional an episode now about, wow, my opinion of Natalie has changed from, you know, I think, you know, she could easily be being set up to be, you know, a close loser or a winner because we're getting all this attention from other people, words of the respect they're getting for Natalie, you know? Yeah, Whereas, I think Natalie uh, would be a great winner. Um, yeah. if, if she's the winner of the season, I think that she has a great arc. Um, yeah. Not the best arc, but a good one. And I think that she's doing, she's being really analytical in a ways that I would love to see other players be. She's telling the truth when she needs to without hesitation. She wasn't like, uh, oh, no, wait, oh, okay, it was me. She's like, yeah, that's true. I'm sorry. I don't think I could beat you. Like, you know, she's not mincing her words. She's not trying to be like overly. Oh my God. It's because you're Muna. It's because you're Muna. Yeah. She's like, listen, I'm just trying to play this game and I don't think I can. So good. You. It was and so Muna's good. like, you and it was know what? Respect it. And I, I think there's a good thing. And not to get too much into, you know, editing, but I'm glad it was explained. She, she did a great job explaining her thought press to, process to us. Because as a viewer, I think there would have been a way to see that as, oh, she just got flustered and like cocked to it. And she was like, no, in a split second, I made a calculation that it was the right thing to do. And it was. And we saw it pay off immediately, which is with people like um, Muna. And I think even people, you know, a lot of the people left in the game, like Jacob and, jo you know, most of the people left in this game right now, always better to, 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 to do it right to their face than to go behind their back. That's what they don't like. And, yeah. you know, um, the only person she pissed off was Billy. But, I mean, I think that if Muna gets into the jury and Natalie is sitting in the final two, Muna is somebody you want in the jury advocating for you. Like, that is how Jacob Jones won Winners at War 2, is Muna is an amazing... It, well, I mean, he played a game. I'm not, <laughs> not going to say it was only Muna. But Muna is an amazing advocate, and she advocated for him hardcore. Um, and I think that, you know, if I were playing a game, I'd want Muna in my corner on the jury. And certainly I wouldn't want her against me, but it's a major plus. And Natalie just scored those points. Now she still has to get there and she still has to make sure Muna's on the jury and she doesn't piss, piss her off in the meantime. But it was a major move for Natalie. Yeah. I'd love to see it. But we saw them running around. Everyone told everyone about the final four that it seemed like most of them had already come to that conclusion in their head because it's very... Uh, it kind of works for all of them. It works for all their incentives. I think Spencer thinks, oh, like, uh, I'm, I probably don't have such great odds, but at least I'm getting there with, you know, Muna, and maybe I can get Muna voted out at Final Four, and then she won't drag me because now we've had this rivalry. You know, I, I think maybe that's his idea. I think they all have an idea of what they would want to do in that Final Four, and so it's pretty mutually beneficial um, for all of them. Uh, but, you know, it leaves out, you know, the two people on the block and Natalie. Um, and so... The three people who voted out Muna last, last right. episode are now... Um, now, I don't know if Muna has a plan to get past Final Four. She seems really worried. She says nobody wants to sit next to her. So she seems really worried. But... If anyone can do it, it's Muna Abdullahi. You know, she's done it yeah. a couple of times already, so. I mean, and this is the situation that you face when, you know, look, um, not to get into this discourse for the 200th time, but people, you know, talk about, you know, reputation and these kind of things. You and I, mean, I wouldn't know anything about that kind of discourse. Yeah, right. I mean, I think, you know, we've, we've both had that conversation happen about us and like, look, there's upsides and downsides to everything. Life is very dynamic. We're about to be the downside of having a big reputation is how can I possibly get past this quest for Final Four? Very difficult, you know, for as much upside potential, you know, which I don't really agree with this argument, but that people might say, oh, you know, you know people, people like you, whatever. Like, you know, all that downside comes crashing down when people have to maybe sit next to you <laughs> in front of a jury. So Muna knows the challenge that she has ahead, particularly having been voted out and won her way back. And so I think she's, you know, maybe setting herself up to, 
you know, hopefully band together her votes with Billy and then at least force um, a tie or something. I mean, you know, she knows exactly what's going on. I, I don't doubt she has a plan. Um, maybe it's going for Spencer. Maybe it's going for Josh and getting that Spencer drag. Um, but, you know, I, I think the final four is probably the best move for everyone involved. I mean, not to be... You know, it's, I think that Josh can go to any to Final Four with anybody, but I think it's best if he goes with them. Um, you're probably right. I mean, and everyone think, wants Spencer in their Final Four at this point. So, yes. So yes, it's, everybody it's really, wants everybody wants to sit next to Spencer. I, I you know what? I think it's very interesting that Marcelo was up. Uh, I'm kind of confused by that because he. A lot of people talked about how he was a goat to drag, like Josh did and stuff to the end because nobody seems to respect his game at all. Literally no one had a, uh, like anything to say good about Marcelo's game. So I'm a little surprised, but so it was all about the betrayal that he was going up as a nominee. Um, I think that he would have ridden a lot further if he hadn't been taken out in the battle match solely based on the fact that nobody cared about his game and everyone thought that they could beat him or Spencer. Right. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, and I think one thing was as an audience member, I think I was a little higher on Marcelo's game than most people were. Um, mainly because I really like Marcelo, but um, um, just like the few times that I've met him and played with him, uh, and I was like, oh, he's going to, you know, it's going to be revealed that he has all these great relationships. And I was like, oh, actually, it was uh, it was the opposite. Um, you know, I had sort of thought like, oh, he's, you know, not getting any attention because he feels good with everyone. I think it was more that he was actually flying under the radar. Um, and also, I think if you're going to, you know, try and implement a strategy like that, you got to be a, a really good at those things like this challenge where you're talking to the jury. You know, you got to really execute on all your conversations. And we saw him, you know, fail at a lot of conversations in this episode. Um, you know, I, I was surprised he didn't do more to try and get Jacob to switch because now, you know, we know that's allowed. So, um, you know, yeah. so I think. Now, no matter what, he probably would have ended up as Marcelo, right? Uh, yeah, but he didn't know that, right? So. Yeah, it was kind of, I mean, like, honestly, I feel like Jacob misplayed this completely. Jacob has yeah, a habit he, of, it he feels like any of his allies have, like, even looked at him sideways. He's, like, dead to me. I'm going to cut your throat myself. Um, he doesn't do a good job trying to win back allies. Um, so, like, for example, here with Marcelo, why didn't he try to drag Muna? Like, at least give the attempt. Yeah. Like that he knew a he knew Mina had the LOS right. So, he, but he he assumed that he was he and Marcelo were his were Muna's um, nominee, so Muna was safe. But why not double check? What would it so have I hurt? Think, I think he did it. My speculation on this is because, well, everyone, you know, I, I want to give everyone the maximum amount of credit. So here's here's from my perspective why he did what he did, and he gives that little. So we should move on. We should move on to the picking, right? Was there anything else from that main round? I don't no, think. No. I think we, not really. As so, when he gives this little like, I don't even know what to call it, to Muna. That's like, yeah. I just want to like, you know, I, I don't really even know what he said. It was just a tonal thing to me. <laughs> I was yeah. Like, what he put you, on his Jacob, his Jacob Jones voice. Hey, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is what it is. It is. And you know us. And that's what it was, you know, and that's how it is. And I think, you and know, whatever what that was and not picking her, even though she knew that he knew, maybe that's, he's like, look, I'm taking out my guy. My path to the end is with you, Muna. I'm going to try and rebuild this the next episode. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a pretty optimistic strategy, but that's, that has to be what it was, right? Between that little thing. That's not what he says. I feel like if you were going to do that, you would say it. You'd be like, like he said to Billy, I'm not going to come for you, Billy, because I admire your loyalty. So why didn't he say that to Muna? What he said to Muna was, I assume you're safe, so I'm not going to try. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I mean, that's just my either, own like either own your loyalty. Like, it, I don't think I don't. I think he honestly thought that she was safe and he didn't try to pick her. Because of that, 
And then he didn't want to pick Natalie and Spencer because they were... I don't know why he didn't pick Josh. Oh, wait. The other thing is he just was like, I'm not going to reveal votes. Like, I know how everyone voted. I was like, the hubris. <laughs> reveal the votes anyway. Like, just... Yeah. Like, let people fight it out. Have that conversation. Like... Yeah. It was I mean, they were great. pretty telegraphed. But, you know... Did, didn't don't you want to know? Just pick the you know pick all the people that voted on your side, Ellie, or the two people you know, and you know, and and just confirm you know if you're gonna stay. It's just a free information, you know. Maybe get two people going against each other. It's that to me was really strange. I'm kind of surprised they let him not do it. I know. I felt like he should have to, but yeah. I I think that well, I mean well, I yeah. guess if you're gonna if you want to not have information, don't have information. I just thought he misplayed this whole thing. It was disappointing because i feel like he got very flustered this round with marcello coming for him and i think that it yeah. threw him off and he made he made emotional decisions he decided <laughs> he decided muna was safe so he didn't pick muna he, he decided marcello betrayed him so he's gonna pick marcello and i'm just he, like bro he picks marcello too and it's like <sighs> i just don't know i mean i i get the argument it's like Perceived as a pair. Now we're fighting. Let's just end it. And maybe there's emotions, like you said, in there. Like, let's just get it done. But I, I'm, uh, again, trying to be as charitable as possible. But, you know, it just seems not necessarily good to me. There's also a good amount of animosity towards Marcelo. Maybe you can get something onto him in, in another straightforward vote. And he might not pick you. Yeah, it just feels wrong. Who do you think he should have picked? Assuming he's not going to pick Muna because he genuinely thinks Muna's safe. For no, I think, he should pick Muna. I think he should have picked Muna like, and flushed her LOS. And then he he would have picked Josh and flushed his LOS. And then he would have ended up on Marcelo. And that's fine. Like I think he should have taken sure. Marcelo. But he would have brought Marcelo oh. in a lot further. Marcelo would have been like, hey, at least he tried. You know, Now you're sending a really pissed off Marcelo into the jury. Yeah. Uh, and 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 you didn't flush anybody's LOSs. If he yeah. came to luxury roll, guaranteed he's getting a he's going to be the only one with an advantage going into the next round because all the LOSs and the battle match are in there now. Well, yeah, no, I totally agree. And it's the other funny thing about it too is like there's only six people who's gonna wind up on the other end of those LOSs, like almost a hundred percent Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it almost felt like the move he was making, like if he was going to lose to Marcelo, you know? Yeah. You know, where it's like, may as well leave him in the game because it'll be fun. <laughs> like, but it's like, no, you won. Um, but yeah, he, he picks Marcelo. Um, and Marcelo then. Uh, gives a speech. Yeah, he gives a speech and he's pretty nice at the for most of it. It's just sort of weird little compliments. Like little, here's a little treat for you. I kind of forgot this exactly what he said in this part. He's just like, no, it was kind of like white noise at this point, a little bit. Josh, you're a fucking pussy, man. <laughs> what? I don't know what was. No, that. here's the thing. This is not the first time we've seen. So Marcelo said, "I hate Shireen," right? And then like, two episodes later, he was like, "JK, I was wrong. I I love Shireen. She's amazing." Then he's like. Brendan, wake up. You're not playing a game. And I'm like, Brendan's playing maybe harder than you, at least as hard as you. He's like, Natalie, I'm so proud of you for finally playing. And I'm like, so he has this weird thought process that he is the best player in the game and that there are floaters, including Natalie, Brendan, and Josh, who aren't doing anything, and he needs to call them out. Where Josh is arguably playing one of the best games, right? He's integrated yeah. himself very well. He's got a lot of strategic conversations happening that he can point to. And look he has where he amazing was reads. One. <laughs> yes, he has amazing reads. He has some of the best really as far as, like, he and Natalie are are seeing things the clearest and he's actually able to implement them in, in ways. I mean, so, um, but that was amazing. That was amazing. And he said, I'm just being honest. And Josh said, well, honestly, fuck honestly, you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, Josh. It's hard very... because this is the second time this has happened to Marcelo, right? He, Marcelo is the recipient of the, of the infamous um, F2FU from Jason. 
tea in the mini conversations. Yes. And now he's from the you're being honest, well, honestly, fuck you moment in live. Um, but I mean, it was he, I mean, Josh is quite the cast. I mean, he's really quick witted, he's really good TV. Uh, he, like, I don't, I would not have been able to come to a response with that. It looked like he was like prepared for it. <laughs> like, he, I, he's very like, clever. He's very right, pack your bag. <laughs> get get out. Like it's just like really good. He he he's very it's kind of weird on, on Twitter. He's very nerdy. He makes a lot of dad jokes. <laughs> I, I it, played in a, a mini with him. Uh-huh. Uh huh. How, how was that? Uh, and we were one on one at one point. Like maybe gonna go home. And just he is really sharp. <laughs> that guy and he like um. You know, I think something that has been a theme this season is um, men uh, do be yelling and talking down to people and uh, men be doing that a lot. And I think he has a great way of like being really forceful while not patronizing and talking down to people of being like confident and energetic and, you know, high energy and loud, but it's not condescending to anyone you know yeah um, and he also he also gives the energy he gets is a lot of it right like yeah. he like you know he threatens Brent but in a way that's very straightforward is not condescending he's just like alright you do it I'm gonna drag you and Brent's yeah. like no and he's like no I'm gonna do it that's it Marcel comes at him he comes back at him not once, but twice. He and Marcel have never gotten along, too. Remember, Marcelo put him in exile, um, and Josh resents that greatly. Okay, so, yeah. And they talked about it a little bit last episode. So, yeah. Josh, Josh has never forgiven him for that. Um, and I think that, you know, he's eager to go with it at Marcel. If Marcel wants to pick a fight with Josh, I think Josh is like, I have been waiting. Um, and I almost think that Josh would rather be in that battle match. I mean, he wouldn't, but, you know, he's, he's, he's said, not afraid of it. And that's he's let everyone know. You know, I've won one and I'm not afraid of it. And that's really, that's really powerful because I think it kind of takes the, the, the shock factor from picking someone and, and maybe that's, you know, reading too deep into it. But, I you know, if someone's, like, ready to game, it, it would make me a little more scared to, to pick them. You know, like... I mean, I think Katie talked a little bit about it in her exit interview. Huh. I can't remember if it was Kate. I think it was Katie. That, you know, Josh came back, and he made it seem like he smoked Jay West. He talked himself up big. He was like, I won that, hands down. Put me in another. I don't care. I'm a fucking beast. And I think it worked. <laughs> People are a little afraid of him. Yeah, I mean, he... He... That was great. That was a great, great moment. I mean, it was weird because I wasn't expecting it, but good TV. Um, but whatever. Uh, so then they go to the battle match. Ender block bash, which I would uh, immediately lose this challenge. Uh, you know, this is you know, I've talked a lot about like which ones I could and could not do physically. This is when like literally my back hurt watching it. I, there's no fucking way I could do it. But Marcel well, spent thirteen hundred. Jack, jumping jacks a day, and I do not. <laughs> no, literally, when they were explaining it, I was like, oh, this doesn't seem so bad. And then the moment they were actually, one, untying them. I some, The other person would have been done before I was done untying what looked to be those pretty tight knots. And then, when they were moving them, I, like, I don't know. I have bad balance. I don't have good aim. Uh, You're very you know, lanky. I'm very lanky, but... You know, it's I have really skinny arms or like noodles, you know. Mm. So I don't know. Yeah. Um it seemed tough. Maybe on the and, jumping jacks routine. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, but they both they both, you know, messed up with the cinder blocks a bunch of times. But you know, Jacob was pretty healthily ahead the whole way. Marcelo's uh strategy changed every time he went to lay out the cinder blocks. Um, and it also seemed like he had a little bit of a tougher time moving them. So he's at a pretty distinct disadvantage. Uh, the whole I think that I think adrenaline maybe does isn't Marcelo's best friend. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I think he freaks himself out. 
And there are two parts to this challenge. I guess three parts, right? Like balancing, moving the center blocks, and throwing the balls. And if you aren't calm and centered when you're throwing the balls, you're not going to be able to aim. And it kind of feels like Marcel is just throwing, 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 throwing is his strategy. Um, whereas I feel like Jacob was like, take a moment and then throw. Take a well, moment and then and, and if you're freaking out when you throw them, you're just going to fall off the center block and have to go back. When Jacob went the first time and he came back and he like missed it back on the way back in and fell off mm-hmm. that very first time when he had already shot the ball, I was like, oh, I would have done that too. Like I wouldn't have realized, like I wouldn't have looked at it going back to it. Um, and like, it was just like, Marcel was like shaky and um, you know, Jacob, he threw his little yeah. ball. Also, putting the balls in the balls, um, whereas Marcel went balls, sweatpants, pockets. Two really distinct strategies on carrying the little balls. Um, yeah. I mean, it was a choice. I guess you do what you do, but it definitely, I would like to say season five applicants, maybe bring clothes with pockets. Yeah. That, that, um, that would be my, I mean, like Jacob won, so maybe that's the better strategy. But I um. Have- for similar. production's sake, I'm gonna say bring pockets. I have similar sweatpants to Marcelo's sweatpants that he was wearing, and stuff always falls out of those pockets. So mm-hmm. who's to say? But I don't know. You know, I, I wouldn't have been against like wearing a jacket because mm-hmm. um I also, think it was really warm that is, is uh, what really it is. Warm. Like, yeah. Because also maybe cinder block grazing your you know wrists and such, and maybe like just tapping yeah. your wrist and dropping it. I w- maybe would have wanted some traction. But um, yeah, anyway. You're going to miss Marcelo's um, odd reactions to things, right? Oh, yeah. Like, he he said, Natalie, is that a skirt or a dress? And then he said, this is the first time I've ever done this in their block in real life. And I was like, what? Like, yeah. Is that a skirt or a dress was awesome because um, I don't have either uh, in the wardrobe yet. Who knows? Um, but I knew I was a hundred percent. So I don't know if Marcelo is really new to, you know, I don't know, but I feel like th- those are pretty common, you know, things. So, yeah. And then, and then he was just like, these look heavier than they do. These are heavier than they look on TV. And I'm just like, I don't understand that about a cinder block. I've picked up a cinder block. Have you? I have not, but I feel like they're an icon of things that are relatively heavy. That's true. I mean, like, like when people, blocks. when like the mafia drowns people, they they put cinder blocks on them. Yeah, like uh, my first thought of the cinder block is not like I don't know how much that weighs. <laughs> it's um, that's a heavy thing. <laughs> I would Literally, say at least fifteen pounds, right? At least fifteen. What, what does one even do with a cinder block in you know, like <laughs> building or manufacturing? Like to me, it is purpose is to be heavy. <laughs> I think people use them to stack things and um, create. What, other cinder things. blocks? Yeah, you create, you like, I don't know. I've seen like a lot of people like stack cinder blocks and then you put like wood over it to use as a table and stuff. Right. I don't know. I, I, I did well, not whatever. ask to be put on the spot like this, Charlie. No, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, okay. Um, Jacob wins. So, so Jacob wins. And um, Marcel is that he lets us all know he's not in shape, he's really panning. I'm so unfit. That's how I would have been too. So I get it. Um, I wouldn't even try it. I've been like, Jacob, this is you. Congratulations. Oh, I would have shot nine, the ball bro. from the uh, initial zone. That would have been the only way I could do it. Yep. That I would have, would, that's I would smart. Have them from the initial zone, run back. Uh, Jake Round or TR, let me know if that would have been allowed. My great strategy of never dealing with the cinder blocks. Um, <laughs> Maybe but, just uh, move one cinder block out in in the and stand the um, But yeah, and so Marcelo goes, and we're down to six. And you know, it, I think it's going to be a pretty tight horse race. But I'm pretty optimistic about this final force chances and the amount of time that was spent setting it up. Uh, what What do you think we could see next? Episode? I think that. Mona and Billy are running this game. Um, And the interesting thing will be, will they turn on each other at four? If Natalie can squeak into there, that would be amazing. If Josh can squeak into there, 
to the final two, I think he has a great case um, to win. Um, if Spencer can squeak into the final two, he should be proud of himself, but I don't think he's going to have a chance to win. Yeah. The, the thing about Spencer, right, is, you know, it's another pretty good arc, uh, you know, if he makes it to the final two, but he just doesn't have, when everyone in the game is on the jury, you know, he, it's tough to see the path, you know, like, it's really tough, like, who's the best person he goes against at this point? I don't know. Natalie, is he, like, he can't beat Natalie, I don't think. Especially if Muna's in the jury. Now, if he cuts Muna at, at four and Muna doesn't have time to really talk to the jury, maybe the jury will see his more than Natalie's. But I think if Muna's on the jury, Natalie can beat him. Um, I think that Spencer is ostensibly a lock for the final four, though. But Yes, I, I can't see anybody trying to take him now. He's already at six. Might as well take him at four. If you're Natalie... You if want. you get voted, you don't probably the last person you pick for a battle match. He's one three, you know. It's sort of like, you know, so someone giving the best. It's not going to help you to take him out. Take somebody else out. Yeah, it's like, it wouldn't help you even if you could beat him, which you probably can't. He's won three very different competitions against good players, and so it's just sort of like. Yeah. I mean, someone give me the betting line. Like, I'll, I'll put down the money here <laughs> um, on on a Spencer Final Four, but and then you think. Oh. We have gotten to a very interesting place, which is final six, which is where Natalie and Billy said they were going to vote each other out. They said these in the confessionals, not to each other, but Billy's also confirmed that with um, her final four is that she wants Natalie next. The question is that if they take Natalie next, who is she going to battle match? Probably Billy is my guess. Yeah, I don't think there's a chance there's a chance she picks Muna, right? Because her whole argument is that she has a viable and this is also just for the audience. This is a great example of someone having a good reason to take out a really a person we all like and is running the game like Muna. Like Natalie actually has good incentives to get Muna out. Like her argument makes sense. Now there's been some people throughout this game of sequester who've had worse reasons for targeting certain people. But I'm just illustrating, you know, like, I love Muna. I want her to stay. But this is a good reason to, to want Muna out for her game. And that's why Muna respects it. Because she sees, oh, look, Natalie's incentives line up. And so I think, Susie, you've done a really – I didn't really put those puzzle pieces together. But, yeah, if Muna's on the jury, she's probably going to be Natalie's biggest, you know, biggest advocate. But it's going to be tough for her, right? There's a four going against her, and that four has two LOSs. So what? I think you're probably right. She probably battle match Billy. Yeah. Um, I mean, she might maybe. battle match Muna – just because she's like, I can't be Muna. If I'm going to stay in, I don't want Muna here. Um, is her logic, but I think that she she wants she doesn't see her way forward with Billy at this point. So I think that she's and Billy hasn't battle matched, and I think that's going to be yeah. something in Natalie's mind. She's like, I can't let her get to the end without battle matching if I want to win. So. I see her going for either Muna or Billy. I know Muna's like, damn, I thought girls would stick together. Natalie's a free agent. <laughs> Natalie's yeah, not be, playing that game. <laughs> you know, it'll be a Billy v. Natalie situation next round, assuming it's sort of a straightforward round where everyone can be voted for. But I don't know. It's it's also tough to see that the folks with the LOS is going home. There's so few people. You'd think, you know, they'd know if their name was out there. Um you know, that's not to say they couldn't get, you know, picked in some form or fashion, but I don't know. Maybe they all just band together and vote out Jacob and finish the job. I mean, I think that's what Nally's got. Like, Nally is in a three, right? She thinks with Jacob yeah. and Spencer. So Spencer is in many ways the, she thinks a kind of, they need only one more vote when in reality Spencer is not on her side. Um, so I do think unless she can spot that Spencer is not on her side, she might be in bigger trouble than she realizes. Um, and I don't see her battle matching him, but if she exposes his vote and he voted for her, then maybe, I don't know. This is all, we're, at this point, we're speculating wildly on things that have in no way occurred um, yeah. or maybe 
didn't have a possibility of occurring, but it's so interesting to think about each path forward, uh, given that we know things they don't know. Well, I like, I like Billy and Josh's chances um, yeah. in general in the game mm -hmm. the most because, you know, you don't have, uh, I think the, the Spencer or Jacob, maybe I'm going to get dragged at the final four. You don't have the, oh, I'm obviously playing really good and I've overcome things like, you know, like Muna is going to obviously be there. I think they are the people who land the most in that sweet spot. Now, you know, Muna, Muna sits in front of a jury or Natalie sits in front of a jury with Muna in the jury. You know, I think they're probably doing very well heads up against whoever they're sitting against. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I'm also thinking about the edit a lot. I don't know. You're trying oh. to read the edit. Tough. Tough. Who do you think if you if you had a caller right now? For the final two? Yeah, the title. For the title, Billy. Billy. Yeah, I I, I think that's probably who I picked too. Um I mean we get we got a free training montage from Billy this episode. Yeah, um, that's true. So yeah, play that. Anything you think we didn't touch on? Um, I don't think so. I mean, we talked about Billy's outfit. That was the most important thing to me. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I like that she wore a mask just to intimidate Ma people. Yeah. I, was, I was like, girl, we don't need masks, but okay. It, um, it's just like when you're playing like Mario Kart and you've unlocked like the character customization option. I have not done that, by the way, on the Switch. Can you do that on the Switch? I've gotten like the new bikes and stuff. But, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the bikes. Clothes. But like in some games, you know, you get like new outfits for your character. And that's what it yeah. felt like. We've gotten so far with Billy that um, we, got new, we got a new outfit. All right. Well, thank you so much, Charlie, for being with us. And yeah. thanks always to the sequester team. Y'all apply for our sequester season five. Who knows? Yeah, I could be you that we are, are saying you know, terrible things about. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sure y'all will all do great. Um, all right. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Um, Is it shark bite? Not shark bait.